In my last video I mentioned a film called Susan's Plan and I said I would come back to it at a later point after I've done some writing. Well I've had two or three fruitful days of writing so I thought why not interrupt the creative flow and nitpick at a film most people haven't seen let alone forgotten. This is Susan's Plan or as it was retitled in America Dying to Get Rich dot 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 Susan's Plan. It's a 1998 crime caper comedy. The plot's quite simple. It's a very straightforward premise. I mean, uh, a wife is plotting with her lover to murder her ex-husband for money. I hate the mixed business with pleasure, but in your case, I'm going to make an exception. You're fired! It was set and shot in Los Angeles and starring all of these people, which, though it may seem strange now, were quite a hot cast at the time. This film played several festivals, but was eventually released straight to VHS. Personally, I think that's due to the failure of Blues Brothers 2000 rather than its own merits. This film hasn't been released on any streaming platform to date, meaning the DVD copies can go for quite a price. Get the fuck away from me or I'll hurt you. That shouldn't be a problem. So what's there to like about it? Well actually, it's quite well written. Landis describes it as a crime caper film, but there are actually some really good twists in it. Moments like this keep you guessing, or should there be second guessing, what's actually going on. What's going on? Bob! And were your ears burning? Why? Are you talking about me? Bill was just saying that you killed a Mexican guy in Soledad. Bill says a lot of things. You're full of shit, aren't you, Bill? Yes, sir. Full of shit. I love the fact that after seeing him play so many scientists or dad characters, Dan Aykroyd's playing a heavy in this film. Use a pillow. A pillow? Yeah, yeah to, to smother him. You know. Never done that before. How hard could it be? It's so easy you do it. Laura Flynn Boyle plays Betty a quirky and manipulative character who's brought into the plan for the purposes of seduction. And somehow, Flimble manages to make this character more charming than the lead. Oh. All right, give me the phone. The hell I will. Oh. Help! I'm in room 716, people are trying to kill me! Be quiet. No! Help! Help! <sighs> The humour is of the blackest sort, and I have a theory that America doesn't like black comedies unless they're directed by the Coen brothers. Were this a British picture or a French picture, I think the comedy would be received much better. Which brings me on to its down points. Okay, my question is, where exactly are we supposed to get these guns? What are you talking about? This is Los Angeles, Steve. But you still just can't go into a store and buy one. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. But you have to register. The film is visually ugly, which is surprising seeing its director of photography is Ken Kelsch, who filmed, amongst other things, Bad Lieutenant. But everything is flatly shot and brightly lit. It's got all the style of an episode of Sister Sister. <laughs> The editing of this film feels incredibly baggy, which is unusual for a caper film, which are known for moving at an incredible pace. Let's just quickly look at a couple of scenes. I've done an ever so slight re-edit. First, let's look at my version. Bill, he's, he's got a point about this being a little unfair. Fuck Bill. If it comes down to me offing Holland, I want another 50. Well, we all agreed on the money. I've changed my mind. We're partners in this thing, right? Hey, you caught Bill and Steven in insurance fraud. They're fucking idiots. You decide to recruit them in a scheme of your own. You and Susan got a plan, right? Bill and Steve are amateurs. You quickly come to that conclusion. Then you ask them if they got someone who can back them up in case they fuck up. They fuck up, here I am. I want another $50,000 or it ain't going down. Now, if I agree to this extra money, now you, you gotta give me your word you're not gonna tell Bill or Steve or Betty. How's Betty involved in this? Bill, ask him. Where's Betty? I don't know, man. I said, where's Betty? Is there a problem here? Bob, don't do this. Drop her. What? What are you, nuts? Fuck you. Incidentally, that's one of my favorite scenes from the film. But that was one minute and six seconds. 
let's see the version that is actually in the film. Yeah. Bill, he's, he's got a point about this being a little unfair. Fuck Bill. If it comes down to me offing Holland, I want another 50. Well, we all agreed on the money. I've changed my mind. Bob, we're partners in this thing, right? Hey, you caught Bill and Steven in insurance fraud. They're fucking idiots. You decide to recruit them in a scheme of your own. You and Susan got a plan, right? Bill and Steve are amateurs. You quickly come to that conclusion. Then you ask them if they got someone who can back them up in case they fuck up. They fuck up, here I am. I want another $50,000 or it ain't going down. Now, if I agree to this extra money, now you, you gotta give me your word you're not gonna tell Bill or Steve or Betty. What's this got to do with Betty? Betty, I didn't say Betty. You said Betty. Well, I didn't mean Betty. Well, we said, it sounded like Betty. No, it's Bill, Bill, Betty's Bill's. Betty. <laughs> How's Betty involved in this? Bill, ask him. Where's Betty? I don't know, man. I said, where's Betty? Is there a problem here? Bob, don't do this. Drop your weapon and put your hands in the air. What are you, nuts? Fuck you. That version was 1 minute 28 seconds, so there's 22 seconds difference between the two. I'll let you decide which one worked best, but certainly the first one is more to my tastes. Yes? Did you know Steve doesn't have a car phone? So? You may have noticed that the one person I haven't really spoken about is Susan the main character. And the reason why is she doesn't do a great deal in the film. She's got a lot at stake, so she's not a passive character, but she just sort of sits at the sidelines and orchestrates it, as the film would rather spend much more time with its supporting characters, which are quite entertaining, so don't let me give you the impression that that's a bad thing. But it does sort of get sidelined occasionally. This scene featuring the Doctor character just feels very out of place. Are you going to marry me? What? Let's back up a few steps here. Never mind. Never mind? I wasn't aware that we had even discussed marriage. I'm sorry I brought it up. I'm not sure if it's the staging of the scene which makes it awkward, or the fact that this is the first time we meet his girlfriend, or the fact that the Doctor role has basically been an extended cameo before this point, but it, this scene really feels awkward. How have you been, Betty? I'm sorry, do I know you? Oh, I... <laughs> skiing accident. This scene, which is at the very end of the film, and features a cameo from Ken Kelsch, makes no sense at all. It's just there is some sort of coda when it would have been stronger to end on the previous image, which was this. A pretty white girl like you. What did you do wrong? I guess some things just don't go to plan. This is probably only me here, but I often find that looking at directors' failures are often more interesting than looking at their successes. And I feel bad saying that this is a failure, but it was a commercial failure, and very few people have seen nor heard of it. If I had the money to throw at the project, maybe I'd recommend doing a redux version, high definition transfer, get it regraded and re-edited. But I think basically I would be the only person buying it. Also, if I had that money, it would go towards making my own movie, because I'm Scott Kingsnorth and I'm making a movie.